What do chicken poop, tequila, and human fat have in common? I don't know. They just might fuel your car in the future. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Thank you for joining us today. Let, let's get right into this because I got, I got some good stuff to share with you. Oh, good. I mean, a lot of people have and are trying to find uh, a replacement fuel to gasoline or desile. I spend a lot of my spare time thinking about these kinds of things. For their vehicle. Um, so I got eight of these things that I want to take you these through. These are your ideas? The, no, these are not my ideas. These are ideas that oh, I've wow. gleaned I was like, from the you're, internet. You've really been thinking. Uh, bizarre alternative fuels some of which are horrible ideas, some of which show some promise for the future. Some fails, some future successions. Succeeds? Successes. Successes, bingo. Yeah, they may be a succession, but they could be a successful succession. I'm glad you're with me. What about a car powered by compressed air? Farts? No. <laughs> um, there is an engine that runs by compressed air, electric, Electricity compresses all the air in the thing. You mean like CO2 cartridges that they put in like airsoft guns? No, I mean this AirPod car. Check this baby out here. Wow, that is okay, very, very small. You, you steer this thing with a joystick. I couldn't fit in that thing. And, and you, can buy, you can buy it for under $10,000. I mean, it, it's cheap to make. There's no cooling system, no spark plugs, no muffler, none of that. Uh, is this it, like for a golf course it's, attendant? It's basically like blowing up a balloon and then and then it powers you that way. It, no, not, not really. It's, it, it doesn't it's, propel it's, you in that way. But it, it's, it's an not engine. an air jet. Uh, it only goes 50 miles an hour, and it, but it can go like 124 miles on a, on a tank of compressed air. And you look really cool the whole time you're going there. There's some safety concerns with the size and weight of this thing. You know, it's kind of like, it makes a smart car look beefy. Right. It actually looks like something that my kids would pay a, buy tickets to get on it like the county fair. For 25 cents in front of a grocery store is what I was thinking. Look, Mom, it's got a joystick. Okay, so but but there's potential with that one. You, you think know? so? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's rich people who are gonna be buying this thing and driving around in it. What about a chicken poop powered now, car? Now, there's a lot of that to go around. Now, this falls in the fail category. Uh, back in 1974, Harold Bate, created a chicken poop powered car. Uh, he's a crazy British inventor who also invented a perpetual motion bicycle. That which, probably didn't work. Which I haven't seen him around. It sounds like a great idea, but uh, something tells me it didn't, it didn't work. Uh, he converted his 1953 Hillman to run on methane gas generated by rotten pig and chicken manure. Oh, rotten pig? Wasn't there too? Rotten pig manure. Oh. Like he would take uh, I'm done with this break and throw it in the car. It would require 300 pounds of fermented crap. It would need to ferment for like a to week. To go how long? Uh, I don't know, but it would go up to 75 miles an hour. That's fast. <laughs> so, you get, you know, you That's probably, chicken crap fast. <laughs> He's going to say, this is the thing of the future. All you need is a couple of buckets of manure, a tin drum, and my carburetor conversion device, and you're in business. What's that smell? That's, oh, that's Harold pulling up in the driveway. <laughs> He's back. Harold Bate, 1974, so that didn't work. But would you drive a car powered by human fat? Can you believe, I listen, this exists. Now, I mean, it's basically just another form of biofuel kind of thing. I would definitely do this. Dr. Craig Allen Bittner, a Beverly Hills cosmetic surgeon who reportedly conducted more than 7,000 liposuctions. It's Beverly Hills, I guess you can believe that. Uh, you know, he was a waste not, want not kind of guy, so he saved the leftover fat and turned it into biofuel for his Ford SUV and his girlfriend's Lincoln Navigator. There seems to be some ethical issues around this. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't. I mean, he, he I don't care if you lipo suck me, but I don't want you to put my lipo into your SUV. This he said without my permission. He's quoted as saying, "The vast majority. I don't know why I use this voice. The vast majority of my patients request that I use their fat for fuel, and I have more fat than I can use. It's it's kind of a commentary on society." Why does he I, talk I like a saying. circus like Because he's, try, he's trying to sell his idea. Uh, I would do that. You know, lose your love handles, help the earth. I might go thing. get liposuck just to help this guy out. 
Okay, now I would assume that a sun-powered car is something that's been around for a while, and my assumption would be correct. Take a look at this thing, 1987 GM Sun Racer. Mm -hmm. I remember this, my dad had one. Now, uh, we went across country in it. It it can, top speeds of- Had to 30, lay down the whole time. <laughs> 36 miles per hour, now I think they approved on it. I think you can get 75 miles per hour in this thing too now. What? Um, yeah, but it, it looks like one of those squished beetles that like like a cockroach. It's like a, basically a cockroach. It's got bicycle tires. The, well, the problem with the thing is that uh, it can't, it, it has to weigh less than 14 pounds. The whole vehicle? The whole car weighs 14 pounds. I could curl that. <laughs> There's no way that car only weighs 14 pounds. You got, your the facts are well, off. Uh, the frame weighs 14 pounds. My point is that, you know, uh, there there are some challenges associated with this on a on a mass production scale, yeah. uh, and and you you get to look like you're you're riding around in a squished bug. Yeah, we weren't able to take the family pet along because he weighed too much that that, that summer of '87. What about a car um, powered by a bag of uncompressed gas? I mean, check this car out. You see that whole bag on top? That's not that's not a family going on like a cross country trip. That bag is full of gas. Now during World War One and World War Two. In France, the Netherlands, Germany, and England, an improv improvised solution to the shortage of gasoline was to power the same car with uncompressed gas. Because, I mean, gas wasn't compressed. Uh, you just couldn't get it that way. So what they, it was basically like a, it wasn't floatable gas, or it'd be a dirigible. A dirigible? Like a blimp. Oh. That's since an, it's not it's, floatable. It's advanced. So this thing is just full of like, some sort of gas. That, Highly explosive right. gas. This is like a time bomb, driving around a time bomb. Don't smoke or light a candle. I know how you like to light candles. What about a car powered by tequila? Chrysler created the turbine car in 1963, and they said that it would run on anything that could flow through a pipe and burn with air. So the president of Mexico told Chrysler he wanted it to run on tequila, and they did it. They so apparently he wasn't concerned about any stereotypes being reinforced. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I just right. put the tequila in there. He put two gallons of tequila in this car and went all over LA in the thing. Really? Yeah. Reports say that from then on, the president of Mexico ran his Chrysler on tequila. To right. the to this day. To this day. <laughs> right. Okay. He's still driving around. What about harnessing the power of your own pet? Okay. Use your dog. Z Wiggins, I don't know, his, Z Wiggs, in 1939, I don't know his first name, it started with a Z. He, he created this squirrel cage thing, put his dog in there, made his dog run around like a hamster. A squirrel cage? I'd never seen a squirrel in one of those. You mean a hamster cage. Yeah, I guess you're right. Like a hamster here. And then he would make the thing go, and uh, it, it seems questionable. And the dog was happy about this? Top speed of 85 miles an hour. Oh. <laughs> this is impossible. Yeah, I made that one up. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Uh, like said, there's something else going on yeah. besides dog in that what, what car. All right, and finally, uh, what about powering a car by a laser? Yeah, I thought of that one. Charles Stevens um, is an entrepreneur and inventor. Laser Power Systems is his, uh, his company, and he's trying to harness the power of thorium, which is a radioactive element, which could be a replacement for uranium experientially. No. If as an ex, it's an experimental replacement is what I'm trying to say. Experimentally, so he create he's creating he hasn't done it yet, but he wants to create a laser of thorium. You can't see the laser, but it basically it, it it's kind of like a nuclear powered car. A gram of thorium has the equivalent potential energy content of seven hundred and seven thousand five hundred gallons of gasoline. Where do you get this stuff? You don't get it. It's it's still a prototype. You mean thorium? Yeah, because we need to stock up. You just, it, 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 I mean, me and you need to have grams upon grams of thorium. We can store it in a cooler. It, it's it's, a, it's become dangerous, billionaires. Dude. It's, hey, it's, it's radioactive. Worth it. We could be billionaires. It, 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 but it's radioactive. Get a radioactive, they, radioactivity can't go through styrofoam. All right, hopefully you learned something. Uh, leave a comment and like this video. You know what time it is. That's my gasoline in Indiana. It's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. All of these wheel endings on the Wheel of Mythicality come from people like you, and you know what? We need more. So send them to us using the hashtag GMMWheel. You can do Facebook, Twitter, 
here on YouTube, we need more endings from Hashtag you. Hashtag GMMO. Also videos, that's how you submit those as well. Click through at the end of this episode for more alternative fuels that I didn't get to in the episode. Three-year-olds who see themselves on TV. Hey man. Hey, you wanna watch TV? I got the remote right here. My mom doesn't know I have it. Okay. Let's watch Skinamax. What? What is that? <laughs> I don't know. I just heard my older, older brother talking about it. Is it a Discovery thing? Discovery Kids? Oh, let's watch this. Let's watch a kids show then. It's more appropriate. Okay, Kids Channel. Oh, look, there's. Is this a mirror? This is weird. It doesn't move when I move. You got a runny nose like me? We're on television. We're th stars. No, you just cut it off and this is a reflection. Oh. See? See that? Everything. It is my reflection. Yeah. Well, I, 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 turn it back to skin and max. <laughs> One day, uh, your home, everything that you put into the commode will power your home. It's inevitable that that will happen. Um, every time you poop, you'll be turning on a light bulb. 